Roman numerals. This is video 5 in my Starfort series. I'm making these videos to change the way you think because almost everything you have been taught was designed to program you to stop thinking critically and accept everything you are told as truth without question. In video four, I mentioned Roman numerals. This is a short video to explain the letters used. All letters relate to the shape of our hands as we represent the numbers we are counting on our fingers. There was probably no correlation between these symbols used for counting and symbols for spoken words of the people that used the written form of what we now refer to as Roman numerals. The people we know as Romans and the Roman Empire probably inherited and utilised this system of counting and over time it has changed into a decimal system. So starting with the lowest value, uncia, which translates to ounce, this is a representation of a fingertip. As I believe the designer of this system have 12 digits. Each fingertip, or dot in the sand, or on the paper, or carved, equals one twelfth, and may be, have been represented by holding the hands with pointed fingers towards whoever you're talking to. A little bit like you were doing a, a tiger paw going, Grrr! Semi, or half, is a crooked finger representing a finger that is bent in half. This then appears as an S when you are face to face using your right hand as the, the unused fingers curl back like the bottom of the S. There are other fractions listed in other places, but these tend to be Greek alphabetic notations and not a representation of the hands, which, is, which was my starting point, and I believe these have been added at a later stage of his story. I is simply a single finger, giving us the numbers 1 to 5 or 1 to 4 if you only have 5 digits on your hand. V is 6 or 5. The letter V is used as a representation of the hand with an opposing thumb. I believe like the Greek alphabet used for fractions, the rule of IV equaling one less than V, or one less than five, or one less than six, is a later addition. This was possibly introduced when Latin speaking people adopted the system as the literature, their literal translation of numbers like 18, which is two before 20, or 19, which is one before 20, is then how they would write their numbering system. Whereas this numbering system is a representation of the hands. So I think purely I will stick to the additions rather than the subtractions. X is simply two full hands of, so two Vs, which when written together, can be represented in the form of an X, or maybe cross your hands. In the 12 digit system, a clock face may have had only one X on it at the very top, being 12, at V at the bottom. As with many modern clocks faces, the 12 positions may have simply had a single line to mark the points on smaller dials and show the 3, the 6, the 9 and the 12 position as full numerals. So moving up the numbers, we find L as 50 in the decimal system or 72 if you've got six digits on your finger, on your hands. L is X times V and simply an outstretched thumb on one hand. C is x times x. 
being either 100 or 144, which I said could possibly have given us a G for 144, as that's a gross. However, I'm inclined to stick with the C as a curved hand. And gross is probably a modern word for that number. Cent is simply the Latin for 100 and not necessarily the original articulation or value. D is X times X times V, represented by a flat hand and a curved left hand as viewed from the front. M is X times X times X, represented by two downturned hands, two Vs upside down. Again, milli may simply be the Latin word for the decimal 1000, rather than my alternative of 1728. In base 12, these numbers, so the 72, the 144, the 1728, would have been as natural to work with as you work with 50, 100, 1000. Interestingly, a mile is 1760 yards, which is close to 1728, 12 times 12 times 12, as I might have expected it to be, but that will be covered in my next video. Zero is missing. As this system doesn't require a zero, as used in the decimal system, there doesn't seem to be one. If I had been representing it with hands, I may have used a horizontal line or a flat hand, as you might express when you're saying there's nothing left and you shake your hand left to right in the horizontal plane. A dash would seem the most likely. In Roman, num in Roman documents, written in Latin, the use of the letter N or nil or null has been found, but no true convention has been identified as, of, as often their forms were simply left blank, although it would be interesting to see if a dash had been used and ignored by previous investigators. Today, when doing handwritten accounts, and filling forms, nil is often written rather than zero or left or leaving blank. To show the form has been completed and the box has been has not been missed out. Some people even dash the box. So it would seem natural to use a dash for a zero. So I've been told that the numbering system seemed to stop here, but in written form, we can find examples of this system being extended by adding a horizontal line over the character, which in the decimal system would multiply by 1000. Thus, we can now write to more than 1 million using the horizontal line above an M, a thousand times a thousand. Assuming that was the same principle in base 12, we'd be achieving almost three million in a single overscored character. As today, when we write the six and nine with a line below them to determine their orientation and value, just in case they have a chance of being read in the wrong rotated plane, we could assume this line may indicate the hands were rotated to represent these numbers when expressing face to face. So as in semi representing the right hand, we might assume the line to represent a left hand margin or a rotation of the hands to the right as we form the shapes for the physical representation of these numbers. And there you go. In answer to your question as to why they didn't seem to follow any alphabetical sequence, 
they were never designed to be an alphabet or represent spoken words, just a simplified pictorial reference to the hands and fingers. My next video will cover why we might never need such high numbers in general life.